Hello students, I hope you all are keeping healthy and very fine. So in the previous topics we have discussed regarding the nature of the image obtained in case of a concave mirror where the object is placed in front of it at various different positions, isn't it? So today we are going to mathematically verify that the focal length of any mirror be a concave mirror, convex mirror or even a plane mirror it's always given by half the radius of curvature now focal length students you must remember it's the distance of the principal focus from the pole of a mirror and radius of curvature it is actually the radius of a hollow sphere of which a spherical mirror forms a part so basically F is related to capital R as F is equal to R by 2. That is what we are going to prove. This is to be verified. F is equal to R by 2. That is focal length of a mirror is given by half the radius of curvature. Right? So this is the relationship which we are going to mathematically prove for both converging as well as diverging mirror. Here again I must repeat, converging means concave mirror. I have told you why concave mirror is known as a converging mirror. Why? Because when a parallel beam of light is incident on a concave mirror, then the rays after suffering reflection tend to get converged at a particular point on the principal axis. And that particular point is known as principal focus. So that's the reason why concave mirror is also known as a converging mirror. While students on the other hand, in case of a convex mirror, when a parallel beam of light is incident on a convex mirror, then what happens is, after reflection, the reflected rays appear to be coming from a particular point. It appears to diverge from a particular point on the principal axis. And that particular point on the principal axis is known as principal focus. Right? So that's the very reason why convex mirror is also known as a diverging mirror. So there shouldn't be any confusion regarding the converging and diverging mirror. The focal length of converging mirror we have discussed as per the sign convention it is to be taken as negative. While the focal length of the convex mirror it is to be taken as positive. Right? So let's try to verify this particular formula. First for concave mirror. Right? This is a concave mirror. You are aware in the case of a concave mirror, it's a small part of a hollow sphere, right? Its reflecting surface should be towards the center of the hollow sphere of which it forms a part. So that's concave mirror. So this is suppose a pole and it's a part of a sphere, the center of which would be somewhere over here, right? This is the center of curvature. Line joining P and C, that's the principal axis. And exactly at the midpoint, which we are going to prove. That is the principal focus. This is what we are supposed to prove. Right? This is a concave mirror. Now I have told you, this is a sphere. Any line joining from the center to a point on the surface of the sphere would act as a normal. It will act as a normal. It will make an angle 90 degree with the surface. So suppose this is any reference point. Suppose this is point A. In order to study the reflection over here first, we need to draw a normal. Normal is an imaginary line and I told you to represent normal by dotted lines like this. So join C that is central curvature to point A. This will act as the normal. Right? This is the normal. Normal means perpendicular to the surface. This is perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. So it is the normal. Now a parallel beam of light is incident at point A. It is a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis. This is the incident ray. It is incident at point A and it is parallel to the principal axis. This is the normal, this is the incident ray. Obviously, this will be the angle of incidence. Right? Suppose this angle of incidence is considered to be theta. Now, the ray after getting reflected will bounce back into the same medium obeying the laws of reflection. So it will bounce back into the same medium, like this. So this is the reflected ray. 
the angle with this reflected ray makes with the normal that will be the angle of reflection and as per the first law of reflection angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection so if this is theta the angle of reflection should be also theta fine okay now what to do is make use of some basic mathematical concepts these two are parallel lines this will act as a transversal so this angle would be equal to this angle pair of alternate interior angle it's okay similarly make use of this particular triangle this is the exterior angle and these are the two opposite interior angles and you are aware of this very basic fact that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle so obviously this angle would be this angle would be 2 theta fine so these are the pair of alternate interior angles and this angle is 2 theta because it is the exterior angle and it is given by the sum of the two opposite interior angles right now again i must say in actual practice in actual practice this is a very very small part of a large hollow sphere so what i mean to say is that the size or the aperture of the spherical mirror is very very small so in actual practice this point a lies very close to the pole so what i mean to say is that this theta and 2 theta these are the very very small angles right now in the first case what to do is considering point c as center we can consider ap to be an arc subtending an angle theta at its center right and you are aware the distance between pole and center of curvature is known as radius of curvature while the distance between the pole and the principal focus which is known as the focal length so what to do is consider this one so ap may be considered to be an arc subtending an angle theta at its center right and we are aware of this formula this is a very very basic formula angle is equal to length of the arc length of arc which in this case is ap right divided by radius so if you consider this angle theta length of the arc would be ap this is ap this is the length of the arc divided by the radius cp may be considered to be the radius since angle is very very small aperture being small the angle theta would be also small so ca can be approximately taken to be equal to cp each being equal to the radius right so theta angle length of the arc divided by radius c to p that can be considered to be the radius that is r put this as equation number 1 right similarly consider this one consider angle 2 theta again i have told you aperture being small 2 theta is also small so fa can be considered to be approximately equal to fp so this can be considered to be an arc subtending an angle of 2 theta at point p so considering angle 2 theta would be again length of the arc divided by radius in this case the radius would be fp right so angle 2 theta would be given by length of the arc divided by this distance which may be considered to be equal to this approximately right so it is f it is f put this as equation 2 now what we do is if you divide these two second divided by first you should get the result left hand side will get 2 theta divided by theta will get 2 and over here we will get r by f that is f is equal to r by p so this is a very very simple mathematical derivation of the fact that focal length of a mirror is always equal to half its radius of curvature now as per the sign convention i told you incident ray is traveling from left to right right while the distance 
PC, which is capital R, is measured in the opposite direction. PF is measured in the opposite direction. So what I mean to say is that the focal length of a concave mirror is always, always negative. So focal length is negative means radius of curvature is also negative. So if it is given that the focal length of a spherical mirror is minus 20 cm. Minus sign signifies that the mirror under consideration must be of converging nature. Right? And its radius of curvature will also be of negative sign and it will be given by twice the given focal length. So this is the mathematical verification of the relationship between F and R in case of conversion mirror. Now let's prove the same formula in case of convex mirror. Actually, this formula is valid for each and every type of mirror. Right? Let's do it in the case of convex mirror. Look, this is a convex mirror. I told you, this is a part of a sphere whose center would be somewhere over here. This is its front face, reflecting surface. So convex mirror is a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is away from the center of the hollow sphere of which it forms a part. Right? Students, I have always suggested you, whenever you draw the ray diagram, try to recall each and every definition. Try to recall each and every definition. Right? In that way, you will be able to understand the concept and you will be able to remember all the definitions. So, the center of the circle mirror is known as pole. The line joining P and C, that's principal axis. And the midpoint, which you are going to prove, that's principal focus. This distance is focal length. The distance between P and C, that's radius of curvature. Suppose, at this point, I need to study the reflection of light, right? So for that, first we need to draw normal. Again, any line joining the center to a point on its surface will act as a normal. So join CA and it has to be represented by dot line. This is the normal. Perpendicular to the surface, like this. This is the perpendicular to the surface. Right? Now, a ray is incident parallel to the principal axis, like this. This is the incident ray, which is parallel to the principal axis, and it is incident at point A. This is the incident ray which, and the angle which it makes with the normal, that will be the angle of incidence. Say, theta. Theta is the angle of incidence. Now look, this is the incident ray. It will get bounced back into the same medium, or being the loss of reflection. So it will bounce back into the same medium, like this. The angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal, that's angle of reflection. And as for the first law, angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So this reflected ray, if you produce it in the backward direction, it will appear as if it is coming from point F. And this particular point on the principal axis is known as principal focus. Right? <coughs> So look, if this is theta, this angle would be also theta, vertically opposite angles, isn't it? The vertically opposite angles. Also, this line and this line, both are parallel lines. This can act as a transversal. So this angle is equal to this angle. Pair of corresponding angles. So this is also theta, isn't it? These two are vertically opposite angles, while these two are pair of corresponding angles, isn't it? Now consider this triangle. This is the exterior angle. And as I have just now told you, this is a very very basic thing in mathematics. Exterior angle of a triangle is given by the sum of its opposite interior angle. So, theta plus theta, the extra angle will be given by 2 theta. I hope it's pretty clear. Diagram in optics, in ray optics, ray diagram is of utmost importance. Without ray diagram, you can't derive anything. Ray diagram should be perfect. Right? So, students, please practice hard. Make use of pencil and scale. Avoid freehand diagram. So, now consider, as I have told you, in actual practice, the aperture of the mirror is very very small. So, the point A lies very close to point B. 
Therefore, the angle theta to theta they are very very small, right? So what to do is consider angle theta. As I told you, angle is given by the length of the arc divided by radius. Over here, AP it can be considered to be an arc subtending an angle theta at its center. So angle would be length of the arc divided by radius. Radius is this one. C P that is R. Put this as equation one. So if angle theta is very small, then C A can be considered to be equal to C P, right? So each can be considered to be equal to radius. So angle length of the arc divided by radius. Similarly, consider this triangle, this one. Again, A P can be considered to be an arc subtending angle two theta of radius P F. The distance P F is equal to F. So angle two theta is equal to length of the arc, and it is the arc subtending angle two theta, and the arc is a part of the circle of radius P F, which is equal to F. This is the radius in this case. So divide first from second. What we get is left hand side will get two, and over here we'll get. R by F. That is, we get R is equal to 2F, or F is equal to R by 2. So again, the same formula has been derived for the convex mirror as well, right? Again, let's make use of sign convention. Look, this is the incident ray traveling from left to right. PF. PC they are also measured from left to right so whenever the distance from the pole of the mirror is measured along the direction of the incident ray then the distances are to be assigned positive sign so here as per the new cartesian sign convention pf pc both are positive here pf as per sign convention both are positive so students always remember the focal length Or radius of curvature of a convex or a diverging mirror is always always positive, right? One more thing, this very formula is applicable for plane mirror as well. Plane mirror, imagine this is the spherical mirror, right? For a plane mirror, what happens? The curvature will keep on decreasing like this, and eventually the surface will become flat. So. The radius will keep on increasing. For a plane mirror, the radius of curvature will approach to infinity. Again, I am repeating. For a plane mirror, the radius of curvature will approach to infinity. And when r approaches to infinity, the focal length will also approach to infinity. Therefore, for a plane mirror, for a plane mirror, always remember this. R approaches to infinity, therefore f is equal to r by two. It will also approach to infinity. So the focal length of a plane mirror is infinite, right? So we have discussed for all the mirrors, for plane mirror as well as for spherical mirrors, concave as well as convex. One more important information I would like to share it with you is that there is no effect. in the focal length or radius of curvature of a mirror when a mirror is placed in a medium medium means if it is immersed in water if it is immersed in oil then there won't be any change in the focal length or radius of curvature of the mirror why because it simply depends on the radius of curvature focal length depends on the radius of curvature and radius of curvature for a given large spherical mirror it will be fixed so whether a mirror is immersed in a medium or whether it is placed in air or vacuum or whether it is immersed in oil or any other medium the focal length the radius of curvature of the mirror remain constant its nature also remains same concave mirror will be always of converging nature convex mirror will always be of diverging nature So students, I hope whatever we have discussed in this particular session 
you must have totally understood it so we'll continue in the next session right